Hi guys, so um, I have a friend who has been uh, asking me questions about uh, how I developed uh, my belief systems and uh, in in the red pill and particularly Roald Tomasi normally says that uh, you need to build up your beliefs from ground zero and uh, when we talk about belief system what is, what this means is what we call a worldview uh, a worldview is basically your philosophy of life uh, most of the times the way we interpret life the way we interpret events the way we deal with uh, catastrophe the way we deal the way we deal with disaster and success the, the way we deal with the uh, um personal tragedies and the way we interpret what happens to us is normally shaped by our worldviews so today i want to talk about uh how can you build a worldview at least i'll give you my view most times we just use um you know handed down uh beliefs and uh, most of the times we don't question those beliefs but uh the reason we don't question is uh because we don't know the right kinds of questions to ask um, so for example uh, if you are told that um, there was a flood uh, that took place you know God told Noah that a flood was going to happen and he was told to build an ark and uh, you know he put all the animals in the ark and uh, of course after the flood after the, the floods had abated then Noah came out and uh, you told that there was a bird that brought a leaf and all that. So, depending on your level of uh, understanding of how the universe works, uh, if you've read history, for example, you would know that uh, there was a Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh that uh, had a similar story of God uh, telling a certain man that there was a f there's going to be a flood. He also built an ark and so on. And this story predated the Noah's ark. If you knew something about uh, history, you would know that uh, the Chinese and the Egyptians kept records longer than the Hebrews did. And in none of their records do they talk about a global flood. Uh, if you knew that, uh, for example, animals that, like the kangaroos are only found in Australia, then you would ask, how did the kangaroos come to the Noah's Ark? And uh, after the flood, who took them back? If you knew anything about uh, the the way uh, our our world is, the the, the globe, the un the the earth, you know, the core, the mantle, the crust, and then the atmosphere. If you have uh, one thing you have to know with the earth is nothing lives uh, once it enters the earth's gravitational field, and it's the same case for most planets. If you enter its gravitational field, it captures you. So the water that uh, will have flooded the entire earth in the case of Noah's earth, where did it go to? And even if it evaporated, that volume of water, if it uh, is hung in the atmosphere, it will have a massive greenhouse effect that will actually make the world become like a microwave. We don't be able to exist. Because what happens with the greenhouse effect is that uh, gases like... Uh, carbon dioxide and even uh, in this case water vapor uh, when the sun is shining they allow the rays uh, the heat from the sun to reach the earth but this heat from the sun will not be able to live because of the gases in the atmosphere in this case the water vapor that will make uh, the earth become very hot so anyway that's just uh, questions you should ask yourself I'm not saying it didn't happen. It's just questions you should ask yourself. So when you're building a worldview, it you have to you have to start by asking yourself very basic questions. Uh, you're told that the earth rotates on its own axis. You need to ask yourself why is it doing that? Why when did that start? Uh, the planets in the solar system are going around the sun. Why? When did that start? Why is the sky blue? You know. Why do men have nipples and yet they don't breastfeed? If you're told that uh, there's a theory of evolution that says that uh, uh, we had a common ancestor with them, with the apes, 
What is the evidence for that? How do we know that? If somebody tells you that, um, you know, God exists, for example, how do we know that? Uh, what is the evidence for that? Uh, if somebody tells you that um, uh, you need to rely and listen to your leaders, you know, the world leaders, why should you do that? What does this story tell us about political leaders, uh, for example? So what I've seen is that um, the less you know, the, the more easy it is for you to believe uh, in a lot of hogwash and a lot of, a lot of bullshit. And uh, in this world, one thing you have to know, everybody has an agenda for you. Uh, your parents have an agenda for you. Your pastor has an agenda for you. Your boss has an agenda for you. Your friends have an agenda for you. And uh, anyone who can take an advantage, uh, advantage of you is going to take advantage of you. It is human nature. Human beings are selfish. And so what will happen is that, uh, because I've seen cases, uh, let me give you an example, the Loliondo case. Uh, there was a guy at the border of Tanzania. I don't know, I think he was called Ambilikile. This guy was saying that he had a concussion that uh, could cure any disease you drink it and it cures your disease and he made it very cheap uh, people were making pilgrimages to that place so what happened is that uh, you could find somebody who has diabetes and maybe they have high blood pressure and they have hiv and they believe that uh, this drug can cure them uh, and maybe people had cancer if you understand cancer cancer is an abnormal growth of cells Okay, diabetes is caused by you know uh, poor blood sugar regulation, something to do with insulin. Uh, okay, that's what diabetes is. Okay, it's about insulin and uh, regulation of sugar in your bloodstream. Uh, high blood pressure clogged blood arteries, okay, or blood vessels. Uh, which other disease did I mention? HIV is caused by retrovirus. So there's no way you're going to have any kind of concussion that can cure all these things it's simply not possible uh but people are so ignorant about even disease that uh, uh because of this ignorance they can be conned they can be manipulated and uh, basically their trust can be extorted so it's very very important to develop your own worldview you need to understand the universe and uh, the way they say knowledge is power the more you know, um, the more you're going to proceed in this life in a very confident fashion. The more you're going to conduct uh, your affairs in a manner that uh, is full of confidence and that is orderly and that is not erratic or susceptible to uh, interference from various uh, sources. So we normally say that... Um, the tiger is not afraid of the lion because he's aware of his own strength. So when, when, when you have knowledge, uh, it has the same, same effect. You almost become fearless. You realize that uh, the things that uh, people are afraid of, uh, they don't scare you anymore. For example, I remember when I was a child, I could be scared of uh, the darkness. I grew up in the rural area. And... Uh, of course, when you're a child, you're also physically weak. So that, that just contributes to the fear because you may not be able to defend yourself against uh, maybe aggressors or people who are stronger than you. But uh, when you're an adult, uh, if you don't develop a worldview, you find that uh, the same, same uh, demons, in quotes, or the same uh, creatures that you're afraid of when you're a child, you carry those same fears into your adulthood, you know. Uh, fear of witches, of witchcraft, fear of, uh, uh, among the Luos, we have like Nyawawa, we have night runners and things like that. So, uh, when you think about things, even ghosts, people are afraid even of ghosts. Uh, I remember I had a friend who, as adults, uh, these guys were once, maybe he's going to watch this video, these guys were once uh, um, driving from Karen, going towards uh, uh, Eastlands, going through Langata Road. 
when they reached near Langata Cemetery, uh, their vehicle stopped moving. Uh, they thought it was a breakdown, but they realized it was a lack of fuel. So it had ran out of fuel. So what happened with these guys is that uh, they put the vehicle at the side of the road, but they were full of fear. They were full of fear because they were thinking they could be uh, thugs could find them there and rob them. And they were also afraid uh, of ghosts because it was near a cemetery. So these guys got out of the car because uh, they didn't want to be found in the car by thugs. But even when they were outside the car, they were so scared of the ghost. So they were they are very, very terrified. Uh, fortunately for them, however, they got out of that place. But so the, the thing is, that fear of ghosts uh, made that particular experience very terrible for them. But if they had an understanding of the universe, if they had asked themselves basic questions, uh, if they understood physics, you know you need energy to act, even us as human beings. Uh, if you don't eat, you become weak. Eventually, you die. So even ghosts must have a certain source of energy. Uh, there is nothing in this world that can uh, defy or break the laws of physics. The laws of physics are universal. If you need any kind of action, you need energy, and energy must have a source. It's either transformed. Uh, it normally is transformed from one form to the other. Okay, It doesn't just come from anywhere. So anyway, when you want to build a worldview, the first thing you understand yourself, ask yourself basic questions. Whether they are spiritual, whether they are about science or history, you must have an understanding of history. You need to understand where you've come from. You need to understand, uh, for example, we have been colonized uh, as Africans. Why was it important for the white man to have us call ourselves Mark, Fred, William, and so on? How does that impact on uh, how we see white people? Why was it important for them that we become Christians? How does that impact on uh, the colonial rule and the hegemony of white people and the British Empire? You need to understand why. Ask yourself these questions. Why do uh, the white uh, people represent uh, Jesus as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man? Uh, you need to ask yourself um, um, the history of, of the world, you know. If you are saying that the cradle of mankind is Africa, how are their migration routes? Uh, who was the earliest man? How do we know that? You need to ask yourself uh, questions like, um, is what right right because it is right or is it right because God says it is right? You need to learn about uh, philosophy, moral systems. You need to learn about logic. You need to learn about how to arrive at conclusions uh, from a premise. How do you reason correctly? How do you tie uh, uh, evidence together to make a particular case or argument? How do you move from a hypothesis to a theory and a conjecture? What is the difference? Uh, if Big Bang is the best theory of the existence of the universe, what is the evidence of the Big Bang? If the universe, you're told, is expanding, how do we know it is expanding? If you're told that uh, we have a spirit and we have a soul that is immortal, what is the evidence for that? And uh, does it make sense? Why would God want to create us in that way? And why should we have animals like uh, monkeys and chimpanzees dying, but human beings get to live forever. Uh, why does God have feelings just like human beings? You know, we call that anthropomorphism. God feels jealous. God has needs. God feels joy. God feels happy. You know, why should an everlasting being feel happiness? Does that mean they also feel sadness? Why would they have human feelings? Because those are human feelings. And they serve a certain purpose. It's because people never think about uh, these things. That's why they, th they think about it very casually. Happiness has a purpose. And happiness is just supposed to be like, a, it's part of a feedback loop for motivating you to do a certain, a certain act. Anything you do that is fulfilling or satisfying, and generally anything that improves your survival advantages, we have evolved for, for it to give you feelings of happiness or dopamine. 
So those are things people need to ask themselves. The way we've created uh, God in the image of man. He has, he thinks, he talks. Talking actually is one of the biggest challenges we have with uh, uh, the religious people uh, who say God has to have a message and this message is, is in human form and it's, a, it's in a form that human beings can interpret. So those are things we need to ask ourselves. Um, you need to have a moral philosophy. You need to understand history. You need to understand how the world works. Okay, Basic ideas, just like you need to understand why how the bulb works, this normal bulb. Uh, that we talk about, uh, what is the effect of gravity? Uh, we're looking at uh, ultraviolet and infrared. Uh, they are existing, we cannot see them. What are the limits of uh, the human observation? If you're looking at uh, quantum physics, the collapse of the quantum wave function, what does it mean? Uh, wave particle duality, if you're looking at uh, Schrodinger's cut uh, in quantum uh, physics, what are the implications of that? You need to understand uh, like something called qualia. Qualia is uh, the feeling, something you can't touch, like color. You can't touch blue, you cannot touch yellow, but you can see it. And that is what is called qualia. And when you look at physics, uh, qualia can be represented through frequencies or wavelengths. Basically, what you see as color is just uh, the frequency of the light that that particular surface is reflecting towards your eyes. So we need to understand such things. And uh, there is in philosophy, like uh, we have thought experiments, like the problem of Mary. So uh, you need to understand all these things. And then once you've, have, you've been able to ask all these questions and understood them. And I've seen, for example, so many uh, people, believers, particularly are very, very ignorant. Uh, many people, for example, don't know that uh, nobody knows who wrote the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Many Christians don't even know the earliest gospel that was written. They don't even know in the New Testament which were the first books that were written. And more importantly, how do we know? Everything that anyone tells you, you should always find out. How do they know that? And that's why in scholarship, when someone makes a claim, they need to cite their sources. People don't just know things magically, okay? And uh, if you're knowing something through re reflection or deduction, also, you have to be able to tie your conclusion to the premises. So it's not just a matter of saying things. So people need to know how knowledge is built, epistemology. You need to understand uh, how uh, you can think critically. Critical thinking, again, is very, very important. There is what we call thinking, and there is also what is called critical thinking. There is also imagination, and sometimes, like in our language, uh, we don't we don't distinguish between thinking and imagining. When someone thinks and they, when they're imagining, they, the word for the, that particular action is one and the same thing. So that, I think, is what I wanted to say about knowledge building. It's very important for you as a man to take some time, examine your beliefs, and uh, develop your own worldview. Uh, remember, very recently... Uh, it came out that uh, the way the wild atlas is designed, um, the, share, the size of Africa is misrepresented. It's made to feel much, much smaller than it actually is. And this has been done for the longest time uh, for obvious reasons. So develop your own worldview. Uh, don't walk around uh, with the fear that is fueled by ignorance or with confidence that is fueled by ignorance. It is very, very important for you to take time, research about the world and understand who you are and your place in this universe. So subscribe on this channel. I want to, uh, I'd like to ask you to subscribe on the channel. I'll probably uh, set up uh, a studio uh, in due course so that I can share uh, my thoughts with you guys. If there are any questions you'd like to ask uh, or if there are any topics you want me to talk about, you can tell me. I'm also working on uh, my fourth book on Van Plug this year. I'm going to tackle a subject that uh, will probably make me lose a lot of friends, uh, but it will also make me gain a lot of friends. I know that. Uh, this year, when I was celebrating my birthday, I asked myself what I would regret. If I was to die now, what is the one thing that I would regret? And I realized there's one book I've not written, and I decided I'm going to write it uh, this year. 
So, uh, subscribe and follow me and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.